National Harbor presents the historic video series, History on the Potomac. The history of the National Harbor site is tied to the Potomac River's rich and layered history, reflecting thousands of years of economic, political, and cultural development. This film documents the river's role as a vital source of food, trade, and transportation since humans inhabited the Chesapeake Bay region. The first permanent European settlements in the region were established along the mid-Atlantic coasts in the early 17th century. By the late 1600s, the tobacco-based plantation economy was flourishing, causing land-hungry settlers to push inland along the colony's navigable waterways. The colonists relied on the Potomac River as a means of transport and trade. The river itself was an essential component of frontier life, providing settlers with manufactured goods and collecting tobacco for transport to coastal ports. Even as late as the Civil War, the river transported Union troops and cargo to area forts, camps, and supply depots. Prehistoric hunters and gatherers used the Potomac and other rivers and creeks for transport and trade, long before European colonists relied on the waterways for their livelihood. Later, Algonquin-speaking native groups, such as the Piscataway, established agricultural villages on the terraces above the Chesapeake region's major rivers and tributaries. Accounts from early English explorers like Captain John Smith provide the only surviving written descriptions of the area's indigenous peoples. George Calvert, the first Lord Baltimore, received a charter for the Maryland colony in 1632. As demand for the arable land increased, so did friction with the Native American tribes, who traditionally used the land. Despite some efforts at diplomacy, by the 18th century, most Native peoples had migrated out of the area. Europe's demand for tobacco also brought other costs. Widespread soil depletion and erosion, lack of adequate food supplies, and, of course, slavery. During the 17th and 18th centuries, tobacco plantations relied on the labor of indentured servants, who served for a specific period in exchange for their passage to the New World and sometimes for a small farmstead at the fulfillment of their service. Later, the import and trade of enslaved Africans was established to support the labor-intensive cultivation of tobacco. Unlike indentured servants, the enslaved served for life and their children became property of the plantation owner. Owning slaves became a mark of wealth and prosperity among the colonial elite as only a few could afford to purchase enslaved Africans. Separated from their families and bound for life, the enslaved developed a strong sense of solidarity and community, preserved their traditional beliefs and spiritual practices, and engaged in both passive and active resistance in response to their bondage. Slavery ended in Maryland in 1864 and tobacco cultivation declined, leading to greater agricultural diversification at plantations in southern Prince George's County. The National Harbor site was once home to the Addison family, who ranked among the wealthiest and most powerful families in colonial Maryland. Englishman John Addison immigrated to Maryland in 1667, 
he secured a land grant for several thousand acres on the Potomac River that would later be known as Oxen Hill. The Addison family owned the property known as Oxen Hill Manor and lived there from the late 17th to the early 19th centuries. John Addison's son, Colonel Thomas Addison, inherited Oxen Hill and grew wealthy in Maryland's tobacco economy. In 1710, Thomas and his wife Eleanor constructed a stately brick manor house on the property. An influential public figure, he served as county surveyor, negotiated with Indian tribes, and was appointed by Queen Anne to the Council of Maryland. Like his father, he was a colonel in the Prince George's County Militia. Extensive archaeological investigations have revealed valuable information about Oxen Hill's past. During the 1980s, archaeologists located the remains of the original Oxen Hill Manor and discovered a well, cellar, possible storage buildings, a possible slave quarter, and numerous post holes on the northern part of the property. After the Civil War, shifting cultural and economic tides brought changes to plantation-owning families like the Addisons. Large plantations were sold off to create smaller farms and estates. The Oxen Hill Manor House, built by Colonel Thomas Addison in 1710, stood until it was destroyed by fire in 1895. In 1927, 32 years after the Oxen Hill Manor fire, socialites Sumner and Matilda Wells purchased a portion of the former Addison property and began construction of a new estate there. Sumner Wells served as U.S. Ambassador to Cuba and was Under Secretary of State to President Franklin D. Roosevelt, who reportedly visited the estate often. During the 20th century, the population of Prince George's County grew rapidly. As commercial and industrial development increased, new suburban communities were established and the local economy became more diversified. After World War II, the citizens of Prince George's County displayed a renewed interest in cultural heritage, the Civil Rights Movement, historic sites, and historic preservation, ensuring the protection, management, and interpretation of the county's rich history for future generations.